as of C Sharp 4, which is what we are using, C Sharp only supports singular inheritance. And that means that we can only inherit from one class at a time. We cannot inherit from two classes. So for example, we have the employee class open, and it is already inheriting from person. So if we type a comma and try to inherit from shape, C Sharp or Visual Studio isn't going to give us any type of error. But if we try to build this code and run it, we are going to get an error because employee can only inherit from one class at a time. It cannot inherit from two. And that might seem a little limiting because you know, it is. There are some languages that do support multiple inheritance. But C Sharp supports what are called interfaces. An interface is not a class, but it's a lot like an abstract class where all of the properties and methods are listed as abstract. An interface contains a set of property and method definitions. There's no implementation whatsoever. And these properties and methods have to be implemented by whatever class that interface is applied to. So it's an inheritance of an interface of the properties and methods. It's not an inheritance of implementation like it would be from a base class. So if that's confusing for you, looking at some code should clear this up for you. So let's just do that. We are going to write two interfaces and apply them to the employee class. And to create an interface, we go to the Add menu, and instead of going to Class, we go to New Item. We could do Class, but we would have to change it from Class to Interface. If we go to New Item, choose Interface, it's going to create the interface for us. And whenever you name an interface, it should start with a capital I. This is convention, but it's a convention you should follow. If you look at all of the interfaces in the .NET framework, they begin with a capital I. So whenever you see anything beginning with a capital I, you know it's an interface. Now the interface that we are going to write right now is going to allow us to pay our employees because that's kind of important. So I'm going to call this I salaryable. I know salaryable isn't a word, but it works. I'm going to put public in front, and we need to define the properties and methods needed to pay a salary for our employee. Well, the first thing is the actual salary. So we are going to use a decimal because decimals are accurate, and we want that for currency. Then we need to specify that we can get and set the salary. Now, this is rather special because we can't specify private set or public set or anything like that. We can only specify get and set, nothing else. So really, this is going to be public get and public set, and we don't really want to publicly set the value, so we are just going to say get, and then we will have to work around that within the code inside of employee. Next, we need to be able to pay this salary. So we do that with a method. The method doesn't really need to return a value, so it's going to return void. Pay salary is sufficiently named, and then we don't really need any information for this method to work because it's going to work on the salary property. So this is basically it. We have defined the salary property and the pay salary method that we need to implement within our employee class. And we can do that in one of two ways. First, we need to specify that we want the I salaryable which is right there. And to implement it, we can do so by explicitly implementing it or just plain implementing it. The first explicitly implementing it prepends the salary and pay salary names with I salaryable. This is useful because we can implement multiple interfaces in one class. And if those interfaces have the same names, then they have to be distinguished by the interface that they are part of. So I salaryable dot salary is explicitly implemented. But for most of the time, we don't have that type of problem. We just want to implement it. So we'll go back and implement 
and it always puts it at the bottom of the code file, just so that you know. And it implements salary and pay salary for us with the not implemented exception. So the first thing we need to do is create a private field for our salary property. And then we simply just want to return that field. So return underscore salary. And then the pay salary method needs to you know pay the actual salary. Now, naturally, we don't have any real mechanism to do that. So this is just going to have something important inside of it. Makes sense. Now, we do need to set a value for our salary field. So let's add another parameter to our constructor. We'll call it salary. We do need to validate it. And really, the only valid value for our salary is as long as it is greater than zero. So let's do if salary is less than one, then we want to throw a new argument exception that salary cannot be less than one. And then we need to set the value. And so there we go. We have now written an interface and implemented that interface. So let's go to program.cs. Let's get rid of our shape code. And let's create an employee. We'll call this imp new employee. We'll give him a name of John Doe. He'll be a sales clerk and he'll have a salary of 2000. So naturally, the employee is going to have a salary because we wrote the code to do that. Let's save this to a variable. Not only did we write the code, but we wrote the interface for that. And it also has a pay salary method. Now, remember that we can create an object and save it as its base class in a variable. So we have created an employee object, saved it as a person, and notice that we lose the salary property and the pay salary method. That's just how things work, because as far as the compiler is concerned, this is a person object. So a person does not have a salary property or a pay salary method. But just like we have done with the employee to person, we could do an employee to an I salaryable. And then we gain these two things back. Again, we get salary and pay salary. But notice now we don't have anything else. We don't have first name or last name or say hello. And that's because the I salaryable interface does not have any of those things. It just has the salary and pay salary. So that means that interfaces are data types and we can use them just like any other data type. Now, naturally, we can't create an I salaryable object because an interface is not a class, but we can create an object that implements that interface and assign it to a variable of that type of interface. And you might think, well, what's the use of that? Whenever we have a full featured employee object, why would we even care about the interface? Well, there are going to be times when you don't care about the object, that all you care about is the interface. Because as far as salary is concerned, we don't care about the employee object. We just care if the object has a salary property or a pay salary method. And the same is kind of true for the I enumerable interface. Whenever I briefly talked about it, when we talked about uh, arrays and collections, let's see, we'll just finish that. This is an I enumerable of string. So we can have a string array or a list containing a string or some other type of collection of string. And we really don't care what the actual collection is. All we care about is if it's enumerable, because if it's enumerable, then we can use a loop over it. So there's times when we don't care about the full functionality of the object. We just want specific pieces of it. And in this case, with iSalaryable, we just care about the salary portion of it. Okay, so that's one interface down. Let's create the other interface. And I really don't like this interface because of the nature of the interface, but it unfortunately is a necessity. 
and that is I fireable because there are going to be times when we do need to let an employee go. And I don't like that any more than anyone else does, but that's just a fact of life. And we really don't need any type of properties here. All we really need is a method called fire. So if we go back to employee, we implement it in the same way, a comma, followed by the interface name, iFireable, and then implement it. Once again, we have to scroll all the way down. And of course, we don't have some means of doing that, but we would have some important code to do the firing. We would probably also want to get rid of the salary so we could set it as zero. Even though that kind of violates our own validation code where salary needs to be greater than one or greater than zero. But if we're firing somebody, then setting it as zero is going to be acceptable. So that is the idea of interfaces. It's not as nice as multiple inheritance, but it's useful in its own right.